Hi, Dr. Henry. Uh, thank you for taking my question. I'm just following up on what you're talking about in terms of possible higher herd immunity needed with the variants of concern. And what does that mean for long-term care when, you know, last week you said 89% of, of long-term care staff have received the first dose and 87% of, of uh, residents. Uh, but if all the long-term care staff have been offered the vaccine and so there's a perhaps 11 or so percent who either can't get it for medical reasons or have turned it down. Is that 11 percent, uh, you know, acceptable to you given these uh, perhaps the higher um, herd immunity needed with these variants of concerns? Yeah, so I think we're, we're talking about two different concepts here. And uh, part of that is, you know, how many people does uh, around you need to be protected to make sure that that person who's not immunized is protected too? And what I call com community immunity, or and we use the term herd immunity, although uh, I don't like that one quite so much. But, you know, that's about us, uh, how this virus can propagate in our, in our society and communities in around the world. When we look at long-term care homes right now, they are a, a, a community of themselves and having immunization rates of protection rates that are that high means that they have achieved that herd immunity for in most cases in long-term care. So the if um, there is a small number of people who are not immunized, and if it's a healthcare worker and they do become infected, the chances of them passing it on to any of the residents is now much, much lower because the residents themselves are protected. So we have achieved that, and we're seeing that now in the decreased rates that we're seeing in long-term care. But we're not at the, the point yet where everybody's had their second dose, which gives us longer-lasting immunity. We know that. Um, we still don't know how long that is yet, um, but that's what we need to make sure that we're protecting that little community uh, for as long as possible, as well as possible. So uh, it, it is really on an individual basis, and uh, I'm hoping next week we'll have some um, details to share on that about how we're monitoring the vaccine effectiveness and the protection that we're getting in places like long-term care here in BC. Do you have a follow-up, Katie? Uh, yes, and as a follow-up uh, about the the one COVID, uh, or sorry, the one variant of concern from Nigeria, uh, how, can you say which health health district that person is in, uh, whether they're they're self-isolating, uh, and, and also, I mean, this is a, a secondary, but it, will the province release uh, regular uh, variant numbers so that we can see what's what's happening with the variants of concern? Yeah, so I've been uh, releasing them weekly, actually twice this week, but uh, we, we will be updating those on a weekly basis um, as we continue our surveillance. And I just reported them again today. Usually I do that on Mondays, but uh, reported it today because we're off till Tuesday, and I also wanted to give the results of the, the point prevalence. Um, but yes, the, the new variant under investigation, there's another term for us to use, um, is uh, this one associated with Nigeria, uh, was a, a young uh, person who's in the interior health region who returned from travel to Nigeria and uh, it has been uh, isolating and there's no transmission um, that we're aware of from that person and public health is following up and the investigation continues. Thank you. And the next question comes from Binder Sajjan, CTV. Hi, Dr. Henry. I'm just wondering, with regards to all of these um, variant cases, are they individual cases or is there a potential cluster of cases anywhere? Yeah, there's been a couple of, of both. Um, so I can tell you that I have some details. Of the 29 uh, cases that are associated with the, the B117, the UK variant, all but one were either directly related to travel or um, uh, somebody who was a close contact of somebody who traveled um, and uh, or has been a, a confirmed case, so a cluster uh, in the community that was known um, and then in retrospect was found to be associated with uh, uh, this variant. Um, as you know, we've only started looking for the variants quite recently, so a number of these cases had already been past their infectious period when we found them, so the investigation identified other people that were involved in their cluster. So there have been a couple of those associated with uh, um, the, the UK variant. With the, um, the, 
the 17 that we've seen that have been associated with the South African variant, again, um, there are a few that are travel related, but the majority are actually uh, part of a cluster locally. Um, again, that's been investigated and we've not seen ongoing transmission once we've identified the case, but we have retrospectively identified people that um, that person also was in contact with. And there's a, there's a, a couple though that we do not, do not yet know how they acquired it or where they acquired it from in the community. So two in particular of the South African variant that are concerning, although what we do know is they have not passed it on to others. So there are, um, there are three active cases so far. The rest of them are all retrospective cases or people who've been beyond their infectious period. Follow up, Binder? I do. Um, just given the prevalence uh, test that you spoke about, what is, the, what is your estimate of the total number of variant cases that could potentially be out there in British Columbia right now? Yeah, uh, <laughs> good question. I didn't do that math before I came out here, but what we have found is 0.1% of the, the positive cases uh, that we did in this point prevalence over that five-day period uh, were confirmed to be a variant. So that's a very small number. So if we have 4,000 active cases, we're talking about um, maybe four or five additional people with, um, uh, with, uh, with a, potentially with a variant in the community right now. So we'll continue to do the, these point prevalence um, studies periodically to see if that's increasing. Uh, we'll also be continuing to do targeted surveillance. Um, but you know, the, the good news is that right now, with those uh, 3,099 cases that were um, screened and the whole genome sequencing was done, it was 0.1% that we're seeing right now.